Aurelius back again um, with something new that uh, it crossed my mind. I was having a, a very nice conversation with a couple of friends um, that are very good friends of mine uh, and they're very smart and very intelligent people. Um, but it crossed my mind to make a, an argument and, and to deliver a type of idealism behind what I'm going to talk to you about today. Today, I want to be able to talk to you guys about propaganda. That's right, propaganda. All right, and I'm going to start by telling you a little bit about a story that happens when you join the military, whether it is Navy, Army, Marines, uh, or whatever military you want to join in. When you join in the military, there are two things, two questions that they, that they ask you under oath. This is a big deal because the only reason why they take you under oath is because you're about to start your career in the military. The two questions they ask you is, the first one is, have you ever participated in any communist party anywhere? They ask you this while you're holding your right hand up under oath. I personally, I don't even know what they're talking about because I never, I never, at the time, I didn't know so much about what communism is. Um, I was very naive, you know, I was young. Uh, and I didn't know. Obviously, I said no because I don't know what they're talking about. So my answer was no. The second question they ask you is, would, are you go, will you be holding um, honors to protect the constitution of this nation? That's the second one they ask you. And of course, I'm going to say yes to that because that's the whole reason why I'm joining. I, I, I wasn't born here in America, but I am proud, especially now that I'm a citizen. I am proud. I've always been proud to be here. And I didn't come here uh, to mess this country up. My, my whole goal has always been to succeed from the country. See, if you... If you, if you allow the country to, to take you in, then you'll realize you have all these benefits. You can work around, go to school, do whatever you need to do, work, and you'll get paid off. Something that in other countries, I mean, like if you go to Afghanistan, the monthly, you get in a month, you make $12. And that should sustain you for this whole 12, for the whole month. Here, you get paid a good, if you're making minimum wage, you get at least, uh, what, 2000 3000 depending on what kind of job you do. If it's a part-time, obviously it's going to be less, but you're making American dollars. You know, you're working in America. There are jobs that are not that good, but then that is the way your thinking is. You think that you need to stay at that job instead of looking for something better. So let's go back. Communism deals with idealism and the idealism is based on social um, social status where the government becomes a socialist it takes it doesn't allow you to to um, own land it doesn't allow you to own um, certain commodities like even a house or or even college. It doesn't pay for college, you pay for it, but then they own you because you went to a particular college. This happens in Russia. It also happens in other countries that uh, adopted the idealism behind, behind the propaganda that went through that country. For example, if you notice the flags, for example, look at Russia's flag, and then look at China's flag, how similar they are. They're, they're different in certain details, but it's always a red flag. That's because they adopted the, the communism from Russia. And look at uh, North Korea, for example. It's another similar, very similar flag to the Russian flag because they, they're communists. I mean, aside from being dictators, in the same way you have it in Russia, where uh, Vladimir Putin, for example, um, arranges the you know the votes so that he can get elected every year or every time there is a there is a, an election for a president um, the same thing goes anywhere else now there are some countries that 
were communists, but they changed their way and they switched to um, Democrats or democracy. Uh, the, the reason why they did that is because it wasn't working for them. For One example is Nicaragua. Nicaragua used to be a communist country and they switched. Um, but now look at the other ones. For example, Cuba. Cuba um, is a communist country and they still want to be doing the same thing and therefore they're never going to grow because the idealism behind that is to hold, is the government owns everything and you only work for them. And that's not the way to do business. This is the reason why people are really, really uh, uptight at the idea that here in America, they don't want any socialist uh, socialism going on between the government and the state. Because they know that the moment the government takes over, they want to take over everything. And that's why it's a big deal to them. But there's something else. And I want you to really pay attention to this. In Russia, for example, because they're communists, they think that in order for them to involve the idealism that their country is better than anybody else is to do a parade about their weapons that they have, the weapons, the ICBMs, you know, those weapons of mass destruction, um, stuff like that, you know. So they want to show it off. The same thing goes for North Korea, if you notice that. And the same thing goes for China in the same way. They like to show off. And then you have this stupid president, Trump, trying to do the same because he's an idiot. He doesn't understand he's playing with the wrong people. Uh, he wants to unite everybody, but at the cost of freedom, the cost of selling out our democracy. And even, even though it's dislikable to think about that, it's not even about Trump. Let me explain something to you. And I, and I really like for you to pay attention about this because very few people misunderstand the, the idea about propaganda, how it all works out. You think there's no propaganda here because uh, we never have parades like the way they do someplace else. But I want you to understand how it works out. In the 1920s, there was a, there was a law that was passed that you cannot use the flag for marketing reasons. They did that because they knew that by using the flag, the flag will be marketized. And therefore, now you think that you need to follow the flag as a form of propaganda, which is wrong. Uh, for example, uh, for example, when you have a credit card, for example, and you go to certain places and you pay uh, the fee or whatever it is that you're buying, some places they ask you for a 50 cents fee for using the car. What you don't know is that that's against the law. But the reason why they don't get in trouble is because you don't mention anything to anybody. You don't call back. You, there's no, nobody says anything about it. So therefore, they get away with it. But what they're doing is against the law because you're not supposed to pay 50 cents for using the car. The whole idea where you have a privileged car like a, uh, like a credit card. Uh, I used to have, I used to have a, a nice credit card that would give me a good rate. But every time I would go to certain places, they would ask me to pay a 50 cent fee. And the reason why it does against the law is because it's in the policy of the credit card. But nobody says anything about it and, and stores get away with it. But the moment somebody says something about it and it becomes a big deal, you'll see them turning their way around. So now let's go back to the flag. In the 1920s, they came up with this policy that you cannot and you should not use the flag as a form of marketizing. And then people forgot about it, you know, and they didn't do anything about it. But they went beyond. In, the in 1956, they came back with it again. And they told it off. They said the same thing they said back in 1920. There's a law, there's a policy that says you cannot use the flag for, for example, let me tell you something. Every time I go to Walmart, for example, they got that big flag. So there are two things that you're looking at. For me, then they're using the flag as a form of marketing because they wanna give you a sense of freedom when you go into their store. But what they're doing is illegal. 
because in reality nobody can have the American flag unless it's a government building like a, a firefighter or a police station or a government like the DOD, the Department of Defense, you know, or the FBI or the CIA, any, even the, the DMB. These are government buildings and these buildings have the right to hold the flag. I mentioned this before, that Trump is an idiot because he's hugging the flag, because he's not supposed to do that. The flag doesn't belong to him. It belongs to everybody, every American. So you cannot even have the American flag in your own house flying out high. You can't do that, but you want to do that out of pride. But let me tell you what happens when you have situations like Walmart, or even USA, USA gas station, they have a big flag with a big logo and everything, and they use it as a form of marketing. A lot of people like it, don't get me wrong. You're not supposed to have it on, on, on coffee cups, or on t-shirts, or on anything like that, because people take it the wrong way. They look at a flag and they feel very proud of looking at a flag, but then they go about it the wrong way. What do they do? They start believing that because they're looking at a flag, now they think they have the right to suppress somebody because they don't believe the way they believe about America. And it becomes a type of propaganda where they think that they have the right to tell somebody else, like that stupid idiot Trump is doing, that he thinks he has the right to tell a black man not to kneel down. When the Constitution gives him the right to do so, the flag has nothing to do with it. He's not offending the flag. So, let me give you an example. Say you're in your house and you're in one of your childs, he finds that the toilet is broken. So he comes over to you and he tells you, you know, uh, dad or mom, the toilet is broken. Now, is he a, 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 a better son? than the other son that you might have because he found that problem? No, he's just, uh, he's still the same son. He's still the same kid that found the problem. He just sold it. In other words, he saw something that it was, that needed to be fixed. He knew he couldn't fix it, so he told his dad. And just because his other brother did not see it, that doesn't make him any worse. So it's the same idea about the man that kneeled down. I don't know his name. Uh, but I know about that. But, but I know about about the incident. It's a football player, and he kneeled down because he finds something wrong in the country. He's not, in other words, the kid that found the broken toilet doesn't. Is not saying that the, that the house is that he doesn't like the house, that he doesn't like his father or his mother. He, he doesn't like living there. He's not saying any of that. He's just saying that the toilet is broken. So with that. With that um, idea, I bring you the idea of the man that's kneeling down. He's not saying that he's against the country. He's not saying that he doesn't like the flight, that he doesn't love the country. He's just saying he's seen something wrong. The discipline be behind the cops has always been very, very, very strong. A while back, they asked me to be a cop. And I rejected the idea when I saw the discipline that the academy gives them. I don't like the way they work because they don't have respect for the public. They think that the public uh, need to submit to them. And that's what happens when you give too much authority to somebody who doesn't deserve it. They think they're above God. They're sitting right next to God somehow. That's what they're thinking. And they all do it. In the Marines, we don't do that. We know we abide by certain laws and regulations, and we treat everybody equally. Now, there are some that are bad Marines, but they get corrected, or they get kicked out, or they go to jail, but I am not one of them. I know exactly what the idealism behind the military discipline is, and it's not the same as the cops' academy discipline. They have a different idea about dealing with the public. And that's the reason why the public shed on them. Because they constantly disrespect the public. The public do not carry guns. So what I see, the cops, the sheriffs, all these people are cowards. Because they're, they're messing around with people that do not carry guns. 
If they carry guns, it's different. But I see the constant problem where they have to believe that a certain race has to be patronized more than other races. And it's not right and it's not fair. In the Marines, the only way we can accomplish a task is if we all do it together. I don't care if you're black, white, brown, whatever color you are, you're a Marine. You're no different. And we'll work on the task because we work together. And also, we respect civilian people. We have to do that because without them, we don't get to conquer. Here in America, you don't carry a gun, but when a, t a cop needs to correct you or tell you something that he needs to say, he does it in a very uh, gruesome and, and uh, angry way, like they own you, like they, and I've seen it. You know, and they think they're right because they think that I told you, like they sit right next to God somehow, and that's wrong. They have a very bad discipline that is showing, and that's the reason why people complain. The man that was kneeling down, that's what he was talking about. And I tell you, you know, I'm Hispanic, and that man is black, and there's a poll, and a statistic poll that says that black people get traumatized more than Hispanic. Well, I tell you that's wrong, because they get 49% of dealing with uh, cops, but Hispanic is 71, but we, I guess we don't say so much like the, like the credit card, you know, that, that they don't pay, that you need to pay that extra, extra fee. But we don't say anything and I do not know why. Now, I get tickets, but if the ticket is fair, I'll take it. If the ticket is not fair, I'll argue and go to court for it. But uh, it hasn't happened because I think every ticket I receive I've gotten from a cop is fair. So I said, thank you, sir and I go by my way. What I'm saying is, propaganda works in the same way. You think that because you have the biggest flag, you think that because you have uh, the biggest patriotism behind many flags that you may have in your house, you think that you're better than somebody else. And you're not. You're just a bigot. To be better, you have to be a good citizen, a person that cares about the other citizen. Because in the end, I saw a man uh, told me one time, go back to your country, not knowing that I was Marine. I never told them that, but I told them, you don't, let me tell you something, I said, you tell me to go back to my country without knowing me. And the thing about it is, you have no right to say that to me because I have the same papers you have. So therefore, you can't kick me out of this country because I have the same papers. You just, you just a, a prejudiced or racist person because you look at me that I'm brown and you're white and now you think that you have the right to tell me off under your propaganda views. The idea is that when you have the same papers I do, and we die, we don't take the country with us. You're not taking anything with you, nothing. You die and you're dead. Anything you take with you is just whatever was you, which we do not know. I believe in God, but I figure the only thing you take with you is your soul. But that's just a belief. So really, you have no right to say to somebody else, go back to your country, or hate him because he's brown, or hate him because of any other reason. What you have is you have the right to protect the country from tyranny. And you can go and do that by calling a cop when you see somebody who's up to no good. And then you have the right to call a cop. But you have no right to shoot or hurt somebody because you think you're suspicious about that individual. A lot, of, a lot of years went by and I was doing MP for the Marines for about a year and a half, I think I did. And I learned so much by having to stop people, by having to understand what they're going through. And this is where that comes from. It's wrong that you see flags around. It's wrong that you have the military in high schools trying to recruit people because they know they're stupid. 
kids are stupid when they're in high school. You don't know any better. It's wrong when you do that. It's wrong when they put billboards uh, uh, saying that the Marines, the one and strong or whatever, you know, or the army. It's wrong. It's propaganda. That's exactly what they're doing. So really, when you see a flag and the military doesn't say anything about it, it's because they're doing that exactly. They're building propaganda. So the people believe that by being patriotic, somehow you have the right to say something against somebody else. And it's wrong. Read the policies of 1956 and the 1920s. Go research and find out and you'll see that I'm right. With that, I'm gonna let you go. And I wanna thank you for listening to my, to my, to my video, to my audio. And I want to tell you that love your country the same way I do. Enjoy it. Don't mistreat it. Care about it the same way I do. You do that and you become a good citizen. And that's all you are. Unless you become a Marine or somebody else with authority who can, who can protect the country in a different way. But if you're not, Enjoy it for what it is, a beautiful country. Now, I've been in a lot of countries because as a Marine, they made me travel a lot. I know about 71 countries. And I tell you, America is the most beautiful country I know. So protect it by having to not destroy it, by having to work hard so that the money is used to, to keep caring for it on the roads, on buildings, on parks, and building more stuff so that our country looks better. It already, it's already a great country. I'm just saying, this country has always been great and we have been building on it. Thank you for listening to me. I appreciate you guys for following me. If you have any questions or comments, please do so. Also, please subscribe. I appreciate that if you do that. Watch me on my next video and have a wonderful day.